Hey guys, this is Steve at Option Income. Hey, welcome back to the channel where we talk about stocks and earning an option income. Hey, I'm not a financial planner. This isn't financial advice. I'm just showing you transactions I do in my account and you can just learn by watching. Okay, in today's video, what I wanted to show you, um, I wanted to show you four top stocks that I'm selling puts on in one of my retirement accounts. Last week, I did a video showing you three top stocks that I was uh, selling puts on in my Merrill account and how much I was collecting on that. And I thought it'd be interesting to show you my screener and how I kind of screened out three of these stocks, how I found them. And then basically, um, my last one, I'll show you actually in a spreadsheet, this portfolio that I have. And this is my SEP IRA. Um, that I'm using this example in and it's actually you know I've already sold puts so I'm going to show you how many contracts I have and how much income I'm able to generate but right now it's at a total for this month of about uh, now this is in about a four week period of around two thousand twenty eight dollars for the month uh, that I would collect that I have actually collected up front and then my obligation though to uh, buy those stocks will be taken off based on the expiration dates in October. So anyway, let's get into the video. What I wanted to do, just show you real quick. Um, this is the screener and I'm just going to show you my setup and kind of how I found three of these stocks. And then I'll show you in the spreadsheet my fourth stock. So if I click on screener, um, basically, you know, there's these three tabs. There's descriptive, fundamental and technical. So if I click on descriptive and I always just pick country USA and then under option here, I just pick optionable. I want to make sure that I can sell um, options so I can sell puts or I can sell covered calls on these options that I'm trading. So the other thing, market cap, I don't want any real little tiny companies. So I always pick like over 2 billion here. So I pick over 2 billion. And what I want, I want something also um, that pays a dividend as far as the screener goes. Now, I do have one stock in the portfolio that doesn't pay a dividend that I'm going to show you. So when I open that up, OK, let's just pick dividend over 1%. So I just want to make sure it has a dividend. So over 1%. And then I click on this fundamental tab in the middle. And what I'm interested in here. Um, I go with a forward PE of like under 15. So I'm looking, that's a basically a price to earnings ratio. So under 15 for the forward PE. And then what I wanted to do, I, I kind of focus in on the return on equity. And the return on equity, I want to be over 25%. And then net profit margin, which is you know pretty much bottom line profit margin, I want that to be over 25%, which is really excellent profit margin. So um, these are you know pretty tough metrics. And then the earnings per share growth this year, I just want to make sure that they are growing, not maybe at a crazy growth rate. But just like over 5%, I'd like the, to see the growth rate. Okay, so basically this is a list of about 35 stocks I've gotten this down to. And these are all, you know, relatively good. But what I want to do um, is show you how I kind of focus on volume. Once I get it down to this list, I want here at the top just some of the higher volume ones. And normally I want stocks that are like a million shares and over in volume. So I went pretty high volume. So I click on that once, click on it twice, and then this will basically have the high volume stocks come up to the top. Now it's not always that the high volume ones are the best, but a lot of times I find they are. So that's why I kind of focus on you know large volume. Plus it's easier to get in and out of the, uh, the trades when you're dealing with high volume stocks. So you'll see a couple at the top, like Annaly Capital, that's a mortgage REIT, and that's you know trading a lot of volume today. And then um, 
you know, Pfizer, that was one we talked about last week. Uh, that was a top three that I was selling in my Merrill account. And then um, CSX, that was another one, but that's actually one of the ones that are in this portfolio. So um, these are my three, CSX, uh, Devon, and you can see they all have huge volumes that they're trading. And even down here, this principal financial group is over a million. So these are the three that I researched. And then I'm gonna, now I'm going to show you the spreadsheet and what the portfolio breakout is and how I'm you know, generating over 2,000. So on CSX, I have 10 contracts that I'm selling puts on. So remember, when I'm selling puts, I'm obligating myself to buy um, 100 shares per contract at this strike price. So if it goes below this and I get assigned, I have collateral right now on this on these 10 contracts of $30,000 and I'm being paid um, $1,091 upfront in my account. And then on 10-7, on October 7th, this will expire. Now if it's over 30, um, I won't get the shares and I just keep this amount and my obligation is taken off. So basically you're obligating yourself until this expiration date on the contract. So that's what selling puts is. You're basically just obligating yourself to a strike price you choose and if it's below that and you get assigned, you're willing to take the shares and the um, account will hold back this amount in collateral so that you can cover those shares. Essentially, you're, you're saying you're agreeing you're going to buy them, um, but you're going to buy them at the price you want to buy them at or, or the strike price. And if it never goes down to that strike price um, for you obligating yourself until this expiration date, you're getting to just collect this income or this premium. So that's how it works when you're selling puts. So if you add all these up, um, you know, Devin, I have three contracts on at a $58 strike price. These expire on October 14th and it's paying $342.93 and it required about $17,000 in collateral. Uh, Google, I've got one contract on Google. That's my non-dividend stock, but it's one of the mega cap and I think it's really the best value. I love the moat that Google has around it with search, YouTube, and um, their cloud business. So that's where I really like Google and I really like it at under $100. So I set my strike for $100 and I was able to collect $299.31 on that. And then um, Principal Financial Group, um, I've got two contracts on that at $75 strike. So that was $7,500 per contract. So that required 15,000 in collateral and that was $294.62. Um, so between all of these added up, um, basically that was $2,028 um, in the month that I received up front. And now I just have to wait for these to expire. And we'll see if I do get assigned these shares, um, I'll basically take those shares and then sell covered calls against those. So that's what I do. Or I could just, you know, again, I have the option. If I just want to hold the shares because the market's pulled back so much, um, but more than likely in this uh, market with rising interest rates, I would probably continue to sell covered calls against the shares to collect an income, um, you know, just in case those shares, you know, continue downward a little bit. Um, but I'm pretty comfortable right now at these, you know, prices, at these strike prices with these companies. So that's where I'm at, guys. I just wanted to uh, show you these are my top four um, that I'm, you know, selling puts on in my SEP IRA. Um, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of how I screen um, for those top companies. And then um, again, Google, I pretty much just saw, I follow it all the time and I knew, you know, anything under a hundred bucks on that is, uh, you know, pretty good value. And um, I like the company. And each one of these, if you look, has a moat around it. You know, CSX was a railroad. Devon, you know, oil and natural gas, um, one of the top players in that. 
and then Principal Financial Group has this really huge moat as far as you know, just tons and tons of retirees, of people retiring right now, people getting retirement plans and annuities to try to generate income while they're in retirement. So I think Principal Financial Group is just a really strong one. Um, and you know, so these are all kind of have their own moats around them and just very strong you know, financial uh, balance sheets and everything um, that I really like. So that's how I selected these. And uh, if you like these videos, smash the like button. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure to watch all of our videos.